What do long COVID, fibromyalgia, and chronic fatigue syndrome all have in common? Well, kind of a lot. But today, we're going to talk about T-cell exhaustion, dysregulated inflammation, and the inability to spike a fever. One of the ways long COVID can wreck your life is by exhausting your T-cells. People suffering with chronic fatigue syndrome, some cancers, and reactivating Epstein-Barr virus may already be experiencing this. Inflammation in our bodies is supposed to be a good thing. It's how we heal from injuries and fight off new infections. But our warriors in this battle, in this case T-cells, have limits. And when they fight for too long or in too many battles, a kind of stalemate happens where a virus can linger for a very long time and you never quite get to the point where you spike that big ol' fever and kick it out. This is chronic, dysregulated inflammation and it is one key cause of chronic illness, pain, and fatigue. T-cells are a special kind of white blood cell that help you fight infections. They mark invaders for destruction by macrophages. That's a different type of white blood cell that likes to play Pac-Man inside your body with things that are bad for you. In the presence of a chronic infection like Lyme disease, reactivated Epstein-Barr virus, or COVID, they stop working the way they're supposed to, and an antigen host tug of war occurs where you don't immediately die, but you don't get better either. Because these T cells are responsible for the expression of pyrogens, cytokines that regulate the inflammatory cascade, specifically your ability to spike a fever, you may never be able to manifest a strong enough inflammatory response when they are deranged or exhausted, and you end up with ongoing low-grade chronic inflammation instead of a short high fever after which you feel better. This is why fibromyalgia patients are less likely to die from COVID, but more likely to have long COVID linger for weeks, months, or years. Rejuvenating your T-cells may be a key factor in getting those syndromes to go into remission. In particular, the plant known as astragalus has been shown to assist with T-cell-mediated immunity in infectious diseases, sepsis, and against cancer. But if you're struggling with these conditions, don't just start pounding astragalus right away. Professionals usually don't recommend it in the initial stages of treatment because when a virus is present, it is said to lock the thief in the house. Astragalus helps build a better lock to keep bad guys out, so usually you want to make sure they're already out before you start to use it. That's why botanicals like Bupleurum with its psychosapinin content or Bicalin from Scutellaria are important to inhibit viral replication. Then we upgrade the microbiome, regulate nitric oxide distribution, then we finish it off with astragalus, which is the fun part because as medicinal plants go, it's actually pretty yummy.